Hello neighbor, nice to see your pretty faces. Today we are testing out the Rode NTG. I mean, it just sounds like they're laughing at me. So I got this last week and it's crazy the amount of content that I've shot in a week. Talked into a mic once or twice in my day. Sibilance, sibilance. How now, brown cow? We're ready. Over the years, I have acquired what feels like the entire lineup of Rode products. So you get the point. When it comes to affordability and performance, I don't really think anything matches them. I wanna be clear right off the bat here and say that I am a video guy. This sexy little devil doesn't say anything about audio craftsmanship. I am a video person. That being said, audio is 60% of what you're experiencing. 40% is visual. It really sets your projects apart when your environment is believable. So, God, it's bright out here right now. What the hell happened? Now we're gonna run through the features on this mic really quickly because the purpose of this video is to see how it performs and not to just read through some spec sheet that you can find on Rode's website. Cause that's just, it's boring. Does everyone understand? Good. This mic has a rechargeable battery that lasts up to 30 hours. When you turn the camera on, the mic turns on. The shock mount is adjustable. This stepless gain rotatey thingy is the tits. No longer do you need to go through the menu to change your levels. Two high pass filters and a high frequency boost. There is of course a 20 decibel pad, much like the Video Mic Pro. The best feature by far is the safety channel giving you two channels of audio, one being a backup channel for safety. You can also plug this baby straight into your computer to record voiceover and monitor right off the mic. Moving on. Now you might be wondering, what qualifies as a good mic, Sir Kyle? Well, I have a story. When I got out of film school and I was working on the East Coast, most of what I was experiencing was reality TV shows or documentaries. I remember being on a cooking show, like I actually ended up on the show. Six pounds of meat. This is definitely the greatest thing I've ever seen on a plate. And there was this big sequence, there was hundreds of people that were there. Ah. The boom operator got sick and he had to leave. The sound team was looking around and everybody like, who wants to operate the boom? Which one of you assholes wants to run boom? Uh, me. I'll do it. And I was like, me, I raised my hand. Like, I don't know shit about sound and I don't even really like sound all that much, but I'm gonna do it. They handed me this boom Here. and I had an earpiece in, in the, the headset, everything was wireless. And they were talking to me and telling me what to focus on in my ear. And I just thought this was the coolest thing ever. Nothing really touches the moment that I heard a, a Shep Seamit 5U. This is a fantastic super cardioid shotgun microphone that has an extremely narrow pickup pattern. They were in there monitoring sound in a separate space. And they were like, hey man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta point it at, the, at that guy. And I'm thinking like, I'm not gonna hear that. I was like 15 feet away and they're like, no, you're good. You're gonna pick it up, it's gonna be great. And then I'm pointing it around and like from 15 feet away, I could target that mic at anybody I wanted to hear in a crowd and I could pick up their voice. I'd never really experienced something like that. This was just the beginning of a beautiful partnership. For the next four years, I would use this mic every day on a farm in California where we made short films for the Oprah Winfrey Network, which eventually became a feature film called The Biggest Little Farm, which if you have not seen that movie, stop what you're doing right now. I mean, finish this video, but afterwards, go watch that film. It's critical when you're out in the field and you're filming nature and wildlife and you need to get those ambient sounds of animals out in the wild and from a distance, you can't be super close to them. And Shep's microphones did the job. But unfortunately for the little man, this mic costs over $2,000. <laughs> Cut to now, this new Rode NTG video mic is released and I heard NTG, I already had an NTG4. My immediate reaction was, I'm gonna be able to get a similar result to the Sheps microphone or the Rode NTG4. Obviously with some exceptions, but the concept of having a microphone that is a super cardioid microphone that you're running around with your smaller handheld cameras, being able to pick up quality audio from a distance, hopefully in crowds or in larger ambient environments. That's what I wanted to show in this video and that's what I wanted to kind of see for myself. And my immediate first reactions were not so good. So it's 7 a.m. Uh, I started driving at four. It's a three and a half hour drive to get to a boat. I had a shoot on an island in the Chesapeake Bay called Tangier Island. I just figured that I would tag the GH5 along with me and just pick up some ambient sounds along the way of, uh, <laughs> of some of the crazy people that I get to work with who I love very, very much. Now granted, I was in harsh conditions, right? If I'm on the water in a boat and I set this thing five, six or more feet away and I point it at my subject, you're dealing with wind noise, you're dealing with extremely loud boat motors. The sound mixer on site was looking at me like I was crazy. He's like, this is never gonna work. Dude. It's not even so much about the 
elevated ambience, which is really, really loud. Louder than even I was actually expecting, but also, again, I'm going to go back to the Sheps again, or even the Rode NTG4. When you point those things a few feet away at somebody's face, the ideal scenario is you're going to get great clarity and depth on the voice, kind of like what you're hearing right now, while the surrounding ambience doesn't overpower the voice. Have you learned anything? Yes. Why is he so damn nice? I don't know why he's nice. It doesn't have to be so nice. Maybe I pulled a wolf over everybody's eyes. Maybe I ain't nice. In harsh conditions, it sounded a little bit tinny or just sounded echoey. It, just, it wasn't um, a pleasant sound. How you doing, John? Well, I thought he was a character. I thought I was all right. If you put our genes together and I mix them up, it would be as much system. difference in us as it would be in Richard McClinchy, the Iceman, in Tiny Toons. <laughs> You can't just say, oh, it didn't work and I want to return it. That was honestly my thought. This just sounds like the Rode VideoMic Pro that I already have. And all the stuff on here that you can do is fantastic. So what? At the end of a recent family beach trip, I pulled together a strange contraption with the limited tools available to film an impromptu home video style cooking video without a recipe from that weekend's leftovers. Had to put a rubber band on this shock mount because that broke off. Filming in a crowd would have been the preferred method, but maybe next time. What is it? It sounds like a smorgasbord. Well, we started at lemon, garlic, scampi, and let's turn it into seafood surprise. <laughs> this is the most interesting scampi I've ever had. Pretty colors. What is it? It sounds like a smorgasbord. Well, we started at lemon, garlic, scampi, and let's turn it into seafood surprise. <laughs> this is the most interesting <laughs> scampi I've ever had. We're pretty colors. It's hot. What is it? It sounds like a smorgasbord. Well, we started at lemon, garlic, scampi, and let's turn it into seafood surprise. <laughs> this is the most interesting <laughs> scampi I've ever had. Now, the results are subtle, and there are a number of different ways to go about this, but from what I gathered, the video mic NTG actually picked up a surprising amount of detail from a few feet away, proven more so by this clip of my sister talking shit on the beach from seven to ten feet away. Shit that you need to do, um, but she doesn't do that. You can't always be doing that. You can't always get what you want. <laughs> This is a great all-around mic, and just like any tool in your kit, you need to find out for yourself where it shines and where it totally sucks ass, and how to compensate for the ass sucking. It's less about, you know, judging a book by its cover and more about when you take something and you put it into practice, you know, you have a certain expectation as to how it's going to perform, and it can let you down. And when it does let you down, you shouldn't just throw it out the window and say, gosh, that was, that's not worth it. Oh, this $250 mic didn't work as well as the $2,000 mic? Well, I don't want it. I'll be the first to admit that sometimes I can be rather flippant with my gear choices. There is a saying that's like, you make do with, with what you have. Don't go out and buy a whole bunch of shit when you don't have to, right? Use the thing that you already have access to. And thanks to the affordability and performance of Rode mics, I once made an entire feature film using only Rodelink wireless lavalier mics and the audio turned out great. And I made another film using only the first gen Rode video mic. So now get out there and make something great with what you have. I think you'll be surprised with what you can get away with. I love you so much. Thanks for stopping by. Almost forgot. Take care, neighbor. Also, this. This is um, this is great. This is a great shock mount. I like this one.